it has to be here up in the mountain like nature like almost nature has created it for you and it's just it's just so powerful that you if you engage into it i think it's really hard for you to leave it people that come for the first time they will understand that they didn't came to just another festival they came to ice music festival and that's a total different thing so the whole scene is going to talk to you the same way as music does there's a lot of magic happening here it's very little sounds that you have to pay attention to hear and i think it's it's quite delicate somehow as well If you put the microphone right here. You hear it, right? The low frequent note. I believe in art by accident. You find something and you think it has no value, but you listen to it and it's, this sounds great. Uh, and I've been working a lot with different elements in, in, in my music. So I thought, okay, I go with nature. I try to put microphones underneath the ice uh, to include the sounds of the of the water, and I want to try ice as well. The ice sounded so beautiful that I was completely stuck with it immediately. <laughs> I just had to continue the work. It's like I had no choice. Surprising. To, to see him work with the ice and to, to get that feeling from him inspires me to create something new, to create something different that maybe will challenge him. It's great. Yeah, I can really hit. Oh, yeah. and it last. Yes. Doing ice music is nearly impossible. It's so close to impossible. Uh... This is just crazy. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to invite and include people to it that can develop it more so we can try to make the music even better. And I wanted to, to make a meeting point where people working with different kind of art expressions can meet. And there should be one rule. You have to work with ice or snow. Uh, and I wanted to make an ice music festival then, which would be the only one in the world. I think he's going to love it. <laughs> I think because you frozen them, they're dead. Kill them. It's very difficult to find ice that, that can sing or have a long lasting tone. It's nearly like wine, you know, some years you have good ice and some year, years you have <laughs> bad ice. And there are some specific places, some lakes, secret places that I know have good sounds, but not always. A very cold winter gives us the absolutely best sound. In a normal winter, it snows a lot. This winter has been uh, a bit complicated with uh, temperatures that has been in plus degrees and uh, suddenly it drops down to minus 20 and 25. That gives us a very special ice this year. We won't find the same sound as we find here today on a lake somewhere else in Norway. I go a lot around the, the lakes uh, in the summer and see the movement in the water and find the special angels that gives the water the right position for giving good sound when it frees in the winter. From this block here, I can almost tell you 
on which date it was snowing because of the different layers. And uh, since it has been a very special winter in Norway this year, this ice has uh, a lot of different tones in it. And the ice needs to be wild fabric ice, it doesn't uh, give any sound because it's uh, not naturally uh, produced and uh, it has different, the wild water is the best water and give the best sound. This year the ice has been uh, very terrible and hard to find but uh, I think today we found some ice with good sound. First I check the clarity and then we decide is it good for construction, is it good for instruments. It's really clear, no bubbles at all. That goes directly for fine instruments because the bubbles absorb the vibration. Yeah, we'll reserve that whole block for uh, the two cellos or hopefully one cello and extra horns and assorted things so we have reserved. Regardless, we'll always get some sound out of it. With the bubbles and the impurities in it, that's what dulls it and takes the sound out of it. It's so special that we meet here in the winter. Mother Nature has designed our medium for us, and we take it, we, we sculpt it into sculptures, instruments, the stage. It's all designed, but it's left back here to, to give it back. So we only borrow, we take it, we construct, and we make something beautiful out of it, but we return it. And maybe next year, we may be using some of the same ingredients when it melts back down. So it's I think it's a gift, and we, give a gift to people with it, and then it's returned and we use it again. It's a 100% recyclable product. Easy! <laughs> it's too light. You have to make it bigger next time. Next time? time. <laughs> you happy with it there? Very happy. Like enough, yeah. Very happy. Two main walls, when they are ready, we start to shape the rest of the scene. And uh, we kind of recycle and recycle the snow all the time. We use snow to set up the walls, then we cut them, and with that snow, we build something else. Every year, I try to connect the scene with the, with the instruments and with music. This is the arena, this is what all gonna happen. We have the stage, we have a, a wall on the back that we shaping to give a show a lot of life. This year, we're taking the power of music, and it's like the music has cracked the wall. So, or in other words, like the wall is breathing music. Yeah, I think we can say that. So you'll see in the end, there is the transition between snow and ice as well happening on it. There is these big cracks on the wall, and you have these ice beats coming out with the light, and with the music, it's gonna look just very inspiring, I hope. <laughs> This has to be a cozy scene, despite all the snow and the cold. This, this amphi will create you the conditions you need to set back and enjoy the music. Magic happens because of that. This would not have the same impact down in town. This is one of the most, I would say, challenging and exciting things that I get to do throughout the year. So like I was saying at home, I have a business that we're doing weddings and corporate functions, holiday parties, bar and bat mitzvahs, and we, we do a lot of standard pieces. Um, swans, low birds, uh, company logos, and um, this gets me out of my studio, out into the, the, the wild, so to say. And, um, working with ice of the year and there's a lot of challenges and so many things that come up it, it, it keeps my job uh, really interesting and, and, and exciting it's 
So Bill has just become a part of the whole festival. <laughs> and, and he loves challenges too. So uh, if I challenge him in making an instrument, he really wants to do it. That's one of the ideas also of the festival. Every year should be the instrument of the year. And we try to develop or in, um, invent a new instrument. And this year the cello. Uh, if you're going to have a chat with the Leo. Hi, Leo. Hey. Don't go. It's really nice to meet you. Welcome. Um, yeah. So if you want to come over, I'll, I'll show you uh, yeah. your, your block of ice. Yeah. Hopefully it rolls. You want the, the narrowest part to be where the bridge. approximately where the bridge will be. So maybe I should be as, you know, <laughs> sprout like. Yes, yeah, I understand. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I can adjust the curve a little bit there to oh, yeah, just put in as find much a, as a I good, can. A good turn, but the one, I just want the, this one to continue the same movement. But it gets a little hard with that. Yeah, this I can always take down a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'd like to leave a little to adjust it back. Great. Well, I um, have some work to do then. Yeah. First time we made a guitar three, four years ago, it took about 12 hours to make a guitar. There was a lot of trial and error, a lot of mistakes and breakage, unfortunately, but that's, uh, that's how we learned. So there's a support that we're keeping here in the middle. Uh, this is for the bridge. Um, Cause that's, I'm, I'm assuming and guessing that that's where the most amount of pressure is gonna come from. The thinner we get it and the colder it is outside oh. is when we achieve yeah. really beautiful sounds. Oh. So, um, we're hoping, uh, we're hoping for cold, but yeah. not too cold, that no. fine line, you yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah. What happens if it's too cold? Um, it could probably just vibrate apart. Yeah. We're always trying new, uh, designs and new ideas and new sounds and to keep things fresh and the challenge for everybody. It must be exciting to you as a musician that, yeah. you know, that it's unique, it's different. You put yourself in a situation and see, uh, okay, so let's see what happens. <laughs> My main concern is watching him tune it <laughs> and watching him put the pressure on the strings. And then this next part is uh, really critical. So we're gonna try to freeze the top back on. And mm -hmm. first thing I wanna look for is all these little pieces that I've touched and it's gotten some slush on there, which, which will raise up the seam from the cut. And we need it to be as tight as possible especially here. We get it all off, right? Yeah, so we can really bring this down a lot, I think. Once we have that, we look down and we check all the seams. You see how yeah. nice and tight they are? And look all the way around. Looks really solid, right? The water is uh, our glue. Probably the hardest part about the whole cello. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, just the yep. top. There you go. Okay, go ahead. Good. Good. Plenty, 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 plenty. Perfect, perfect. Slip, slip, slip. That's all right. It's okay. It's okay. Too late now. See, that's off. It's just about instant. And you can tell how cold it is out. See that? That's the ice, it's freezing too fast. Um, every pop you hear, it means that the ice is separating. So it's almost contradicting exactly what we're trying to do is to get it to freeze together. But the water's freezing on the outside first because it's so cold out. And because water expands when it freezes, if it freezes on the outside first, when the inside freezes, it pops the seam. So that's exactly what you're hearing. But over here looks really solid. Um, 
So I'm going to try to put the majority of the weight of the uh, neck more, um, you know, you, you said it angles back the neck as well. Yeah. Yeah? Let's see. That'll be fine. I think this is uh, very good. I am very excited to see what this will sound like. Oops. While you're beginning to tighten, if we start to hear any little uh, crack or anything, we'll just stop, okay? The best feeling. It's really a uh, reward. Every year we work so long and we stand out in the cold for 12 or 14 hours and uh, it's, it's a chilling experience, you know? Something. Yeah. <laughs> Bravo. I like the cold weather, mainly because uh, the ice sounds better when it's cold. You get more of the high frequent notes and you get more of the low frequent, the whole range. But also the ice will sing longer. So that one tone we say, boom, maybe. The longest I had was nearly 15 seconds. It's very limited what you can do with ice, but I, I try to extend it. I try to uh, see how deep you can go and how many different sounds or we can make, or maybe we can make the music richer, even though it's very primitive music, it's still very complex. It's a, it's a trial and error process with every instrument because they're, they're never the same, so you never know what's going to happen. Tai, he's the guy with great visions and uh, always uh, thinks big and new, and, uh, and uh, I'm kind of the, uh, the guy who helps him make it actually work in real life. Ice instruments, they produce a, a very small acoustic sound, very, very, very soft acoustic sound. And, uh, and the key is, uh, the keyword is to get as close as possible, just a regular uh, condenser mic. And, uh, and we have, through trial and error, we have found the sweet spots for all the different kinds of ice instruments. And this particular instrument is a bass bass uh, instrument that has uh, a very, very low frequency coming out of this little crack that you can see here. And you play it like this. It generates a, a 40 hertz uh, low frequency rumble that's uh, really powerful. But then we have some other instruments like the guitar and the cello. Uh, that don't produce so much acoustic sound, and then we go for contact mics and uh, and try to capture the vibrations in the in the ice and the structure of the of the instrument. Place the mic, and then you listen and find that sweet spot. It's alive, like a wooden instrument, or uh, uh, but it's much more fragile, of course. Because the concerts are outside with lots of snow around, we work in an environment with almost no acoustics 
at all. Unlike a concert hall where everything resonates, you generate that the sense of space from scratch with the reverbs and delays and surround speakers. It's a challenge in a lot of ways, both uh, musically and uh, understanding what the musicians are trying to achieve on their instruments. When it works, it's it's great fun and it's uh, it's, it's really fun making something that most people never heard before. Okay. Now with the full moon, a little bit of snow, no wind. Tonight it's going to be magic. Then see not the 